What's going on everybody, it's Frito here for your Overwatch. This time we're going to be breaking down the movement capabilities of Farah. I've recently done a video about her playstyle and doing damage as Farah. This time I'm going to be breaking down specifically her movement capabilities and how to get the most out of them. Now I'm doing something that I suggest you do, that when you're trying to learn a character, go into the private match custom games and just set it on skirmish for infinite time by yourself and just bounce around a few maps and especially maps that you seem to have trouble navigating and want to practice just the positioning and how to get around. Just come in here, put the cooldowns to zero, and have a blast. And this works for just about any character you're trying to improve your movement on. Now, Farah has a couple abilities. Some are obvious and some of them are not so obvious. First of which is if you simply just hold her fuel, it's going to run out quite quickly and you're going to struggle to keep up in the air. Now, I believe because I have the cooldowns set, it may affect the fuel, I, I don't know, but regardless, it is true that if you simply feather the trigger of whatever you have the set to for mouse and keyboard, it's right click as well as space bar. I personally like using the space bar, but it doesn't matter what you set it to. You can get a lot more distance and hover in air. Now, you are a sitting duck in air and move quite slowly while flying, but at least you can maintain position over the battlefield and you're at an awkward angle. Now next, when you're actually in the air and you want to get around, you have the Concussion Blast. The Concussion Blast is what I call the most important movement ability that Farah has. You might think it's her jump pack, but really, more importantly, is the Concussion Blast. Now it has a lot of utility for bumping people away and boosting them off the map, and that's all fine and good, but I personally don't try to abuse that use of it too much and instead try to keep it on deck for when I need to make a quick movement adjustment because movement saves lives whereas the using it to maybe try to boop somebody is pretty unreliable whereas if I want to use it to bounce around it's far more reliable now how do I use this well here's an interesting concept about the concussion blast now we're gonna stand directly next to the surface and bounce away I didn't touch anything that's as far as it's going to push me all the way to about here. Now, we go up there again, and I'm going to stand, let's say, where do I think the extent of the range is? Uh, let's say about here, right? It pushes me back. Notice the difference. I'm pretty much just the exact difference I was away from here, right? That's about how far away I, I was from the wall. What that means is the impact and velocity of the concussion blast maintains throughout the entire radius. Now that's a bunch of big goofy mathematical words. What I mean by that is that you see the big circle here, or rather a uh, sphere is what it's called, of where the concussion blast emits from. It doesn't matter where you hit on it, you will be booped with equal amount of strength. So this means whether you're right on top of something or you are slightly farther away, you will get the same amount of velocity from it boost that far and if I'm a little bit farther away I still get pushed back now the effect of the concussion blast does delay so the closest you are to it the quicker it's going to happen whereas if you're farther away you're gonna have to wait for it to emit now it's not a huge difference it's like a second versus immediate but it could save your life and knowing the difference does matter so simply how do you utilize this when you're moving well what you want to do is if you played Quake, Quake had bounce pads. If you didn't play Quake, I apologize, but this is how I'm going to explain it. On Quake, there'd be bounce pads across the map, right? And you would see a bounce pad. It would be like some circular thing. You stepped on it, and you'd just fly across the map like, woo! And it was a lot of fun. Quake was a great game. Please bring it back. And I think they are actually bringing it back. But in Overwatch, as you play Farah, every surface of the map is a bounce pad. That's how you have to think of it. Wherever there is any solid geometry that you can place a concussion blast, if you can be near it, you can utilize it to get somewhere else. So, you can go from rooftop to rooftop, you can do cheeky mid-air uh, boosts to get right on top of things. You're really going to want to practice this and utilize it in games. It shouldn't take you too long to get the concept of it, but... Using it as an extension of where you can go is where the skill set is. Because if there's, say, a fight over here, you just killed a backline flanker, now your teammates are up, let's say, in the fight. You want to get over there as fast as you can because they're fighting a 5v5, you killed the flanker, now it's time to get over there because we have a rocket barrage. Now, I slightly missed that concussion blast somehow, but uh, I still got over here quite, quite quickly. I might just do it again for uh, the sake of argument. 
will be on top of this roof, and I'll boost this way, and I'm going to be here a lot faster than I would have been otherwise just flying around. It cuts down your t travel time across the map. You're basically flying Jet Farah. You have a one-way ticket to paradise, and uh, Justice Rames from above town is on the next stop. So we get up here, we kill everything, they don't see it coming, you make play of the game, and win easily. Next thing you know, you're in Grandmaster's rank. Uh, so, <laughs> that's the concussion blast in isolation. Let's talk about what I'm going to call the super jump. Maybe other people have names for this. I'm going to call it that uh, until I'm corrected otherwise. But there's two other things about jumping. Now, there's one thing that you should know, that if you look straight down and boost underneath you, you can propel forward. So this helps you get out of spawn. It helps you escape quickly to go straight. Or, a lot of times you'll see what I do, is make sure I get the right angle. Because if you put it right under you, you have a very shallow angle, whereas a lot of times I do want to get a bit of elevation, so I'll put it at sort of a lower 45 degree angle behind me so that I can get a shallow glide across the map because this way it's easier for, to, for you to hit rockets from this way because if you're on the ground level, hitting rockets on this horizontal plane can feel a little goofy, whereas if you can get up a little bit, get up a little bit, you can be firing down because it's a lot easier to hit rockets directly by shooting at a small decline angle. Now, once you learn that, you can actually add in something that's a lot of fun, the super jump that I mentioned before. Boom, Superman all the way across the way. How do I do that? There's two ways. You can look down at the ground while you're moving and push both at the same exact time, or you can concussion blast slightly before. Why does that work? Well, you will get the momentum from the concussion blast and then you can jetpack out of it and you'll still maintain that momentum that you received. And you can do it at the end, or it'll get you slightly higher if you do them both at the same time. So let's try to do it waiting until the extent of the velocity that we receive from the concussion blast. Wait a little bit longer, and that gets like a wider angle. I actually hit some of the sky ceiling there, so we'll do it at a shallower angle and see what happens. Boom! Fly way over that, as opposed to doing them both at the same time which can net you disaster and go straight up in the air. That's probably not what you want. The Concussion Blast is best for getting horizontal movement because obviously your jetpack's going to get you as high as you want to go in air. So, that's all the things that I can think of. Um, I would give some tips that it's important not to stay up in the air against too many hit scans in the distance. If you see there's hit scans, you want to avoid those and get to a spot where they can no longer see you. So, if they were in spawn trying to shoot me out, like if there's a Widowmaker spawning out and they're trying to retake the point as we're capping it, I might want to get down in elevation and play at a, a smaller level. And using this horizontal concussion blast movement allows you to do that for longer. And oftentimes there'll be like a McCree high nooning out in the distance and your jetpack will just get you so high in the air that no matter what, he'll see you. That's why you should think of your concussion blast as your main way of moving around the map. Now, one last thing for your practice. I went on Anubis simply because it's kind of far as map. It's in Egypt. It, it, it makes sense because lore reasons. But you can go on to any map that has a lot of geometry vertically like this. Uh, Anubis is a good one, but also the shrine portion of Nepal is really good with the pillars. And it's a big open area for you to exploit. Go in these and just practice knocking yourself around and getting to the point you want to get to. So you look over there and say, I, I want to get to the other roof as fast as possible. Boom, killed the mercy. Oh, I want to get back. Boom. Onto the roof. Practice doing that, and before long, you will be a master of far as movement. Remember, the goal is to be quick. The faster your movement is, the better. Because the faster you move, the harder you're going to be to hit. If I'm hanging up in air, I might even boost myself down to get the heck out of dodge. If I hear that high noon up on top of the roof, I can boost myself down at that angle to quickly get to the ground and escape again. So practice navigating these maps, seeing what you can get to, how it works. Get really familiar with that big burst of speed that it gets you. And I would say the concussion blast reliably gets you about this far right, in momentum. But just by the mere fact of you floating, you're gonna maintain a bit of that momentum into the float. It starts to wear off right at the end of that burst. And if you're playing against Farah, you actually can predict when the end of that Concussion Blast momentum boost is going to come. It only lasts for about this chasm. As soon as we're over it, we start to slow down immediately. Like, look at this, I am floating entirely up into the angle, but you can see a noticeable difference once I hit here, 
I'm slowing down. I'm slowing down here. Once I hit about here, I'm slowing down again. So if you see Afara boosting, it's very similar to her jetpack. So as she shoots up in the air, when she hits the apex of the jump, she's going to slow down and be very easy to hit. That's been it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Go out and practice up your Farah movement. It will open opportunities that your aim can't. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. Play nice. Play Farah.